Welcome to Money Talk with Aaron Ricketts, presented by Ricketts, Ricketts and Associates, 3245 North Adrian Highway, Suite L. The opinions voiced on Money Talk are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial Member FINRA SIPC. Welcome back to Money Talk. Aaron in the studios. Good afternoon, Aaron. Hi, John. Well, you know, we were talking before the show got started. You know, one of the things that everybody wants to have in their life, they want to be secure. Yes. And most are we, we, we going to get some help there uh, this afternoon? Well, we're going to talk about the Secure Act. And uh, I guess it's uh, up to the uh, listener whether they believe it <laughs> has anything to do with being it's secure. secure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there has been a law that was passed, and I would say many might have heard about it by now. Uh, those retirees uh, that it affects directly, um, we're going to talk about some of those things. When they had the uh, final budget bill that that they passed this Last year, it was um, added on, this retirement planning change or act called the SECURE Act. And actually, SECURE stands for something, that S-E-C-U-R-E, -E, setting every community up for retirement enhancement act. Cool. So I'm glad they just call it the SECURE Act. <laughs> Helps me out. And so it was passed in uh, December 2019. It includes many bipartisan reforms that increase access to workplace plans and expand retirement savings. So I'm going to talk about today the two main things that I believe that it affects, at least for my clients, are number one is required minimum distributions and number two is an inherited IRA or IRAs or retirement, inherited retirement plans. So often we have to, when discussing this, we have to go back and say, okay, what was the law before and what is the change? But I kind of have a question and answer or FAQ uh, uh, list here that I thought we could start with. So the interesting thing is to me that uh, years ago, they decided to say, we need retirees to start taking their retirement savings, forced uh, distributions from these retirement savings at age 70 and a half. I tell you, that's probably the most confusing thing for yeah. people and to talk about. One is a lot of people don't need or want to take their retirement savings at 70 and a half. So they are not happy that they're feeling like the government's forcing them to do that. Well, that's been the law for quite some time. Well, this new law changed that to 72. So we're all happy, smiling. That's the first thing that comes up in conversation uh, with others. You know, they could have made it whatever. We, you know, 75 or 65. <laughs> we were just happy they dropped the half. Because yeah, they tried to have that discussion. Who came with up people. with a half? And I guess it was for, you know, Social Security uh, maximizes it at 70. Uh, and also, in so, so you're going to be almost forced to take Social Security. I mean, it kind of be silly not to take it at 70 if you delay. And uh, uh, the rule was that you could not contribute to your retirement plans, or I should say your IRAs, after 70. So, you know, they kind of mixed and mingled all that stuff in there, and it just confused people. So here we are now. The new required minimum distribution age is 72. So that all sounds like understandable, right? But there's always something that kind of <laughs> might confuse things. And I had a long conversation with a client, uh, and I say long, you know, maybe 20 minutes trying to hash and rehash this stuff. If you turned 70 and a half last year or you are older than 70 and a half last year, you have to continue to take your minimum distributions as you did before. Okay? 
keep that in mind. You can't just turn them off. Let's say you started last year and you're like, oh, I don't have to take it this year because I'm 71. You have to take it this year. You do not get grandfathered or grandmothered into that new uh, law. So there are usually um, one, two, or three, or five or more of our clients that are kind of aging into that. So we've had that discussion with them. So if you have a financial advisor or you're reading uh, stuff online, it's very hard to find those specifics. I mean, I have done some searching and, of course, my company uh, had a has a printout that we kind of went through and and uh, had a, a two hour discussion on the law change, uh, let's say two, three weeks ago. But that uh, that provision is we're happy about it. It pushes it back at least a year and a half to when you have to take your minimum distribution. But uh, it it also requires people, again, that if you are taking it, your minimum distribution, and you started before started last year or before, you have to continue to take it. So keep that in mind. Talk to your advisor if uh, you're in that situation or you're aging into that uh, time frame. You want to be uh, knowing exactly how that works. So that's number one, the required minimum distribution. Number two, inherited IRAs. And this is, uh, uh, I guess, the part of it that kind of... Uh, miffed people that have retirement accounts and have decided to uh, use this, use that whole IRA or re- retirement account as a uh, estate planning strategy, you know, to continue to make sure that it's in place for their spouse if something was to happen to them and or their children uh, if something was to happen to both mom and dad. And you could, what they called, stretch it for long periods of time. And uh, again, it was a a great planning tool. And there was a lot of uh, court um, uh, legal cases uh, surrounding that, again, to allow uh, a person who owns an IRA to stretch that for years and years and years. That is a big thing that has changed. So inherited IRAs, big change. If you have an IRA and you die and you have a spouse, your spouse can uh, take that IRA as their own, transfer it into their own individual name. That is a part of the old law that is still a part of the new law. What changed is that next step. So when it goes to somebody that's other than a spouse, and let's just use children as a, um, and adult children we're mainly talking about, adult children they will have to clear that IRA out within 10 years of death. So that's the new law. Now, if somebody passed away last year and they have not started the changeover or the transfer to uh, an inherited IRA to the children, they still can use the old law so they can still stretch it like it was traditionally. But if somebody passes away January 1st of 2020 or beyond, they're under the new law. And again, that new law says if you're a spouse of an account holder holder that passes, you can assume that account as your own. And if you have a non-spouse beneficiary, and we're talking mainly children, adult children, in this example, those children have to clear out that IRA or what they inherited within 10 years. What was uh, required before is that if somebody had started required minimum distributions and they died, the child had to continue those minimum distributions as the parent was taking those minimum distributions. That has now changed. You do not have to take as an inherited IRA a minimum distribution. You just have to clear that IRA out within 10 years. So we're all interested in this business and our course through our company of how we're going to be notified where people are going to be notified that, you know, 10 years after the date of death, that the uh, IRA has to be cleared out. Um, Time goes by and you might forget those things. I like the concept that, of course, you don't have to take minimum distributions, but there's a more stretch 
provisions, right? So if somebody dies young, you know, a parent dies at, at 70 and it, uh, beneficiaries of children and the children are, you know, 25 years younger, um, you know, they're less than middle age, right? And, and less than 40, they're going to have to um, take that money out within 10 years. They're going to be forced to take that money. So my question is, is this is an inherited IRA. Correct. Is it possible to perhaps gift an IRA to a younger person and avoid having to take minimum distributions? Yeah, uh, that kind of takes us to that next, uh, uh, I said adult children, takes us to that level. What if it's a minor child? Well, the law requires or allows that you delay that uh, distribution, that 10 years until the child reaches age of majority. And it's kind of uh, the question, well, we all believe may, age of majority is probably 18, but we're going to see some, uh, some states, like in Michigan, the age of majority is 21 for some types of investments. So let's just say it's 18, and a child inherits uh, an IRA from a deceased uh, person. It doesn't have to be a parent. You, anybody can inherit an IRA. But at 10 years old, they do not have to take a minimum distribution until they're 18. Then once they're 18, they have to clear that IRA out within 10 years. That's the new law. So there may be some planning around that, maybe, maybe some generational skipping. But for the most part, how I typically see it is uh, uh, the, the larger IRAs are from the boomer generation. Because the IRAs didn't start to become popular. I say IRAs, you know, the 401 case the retirement plans that often convert to the IRAs at retirement, those plans didn't start becoming popular until the 70s. So that's who's retiring today, those uh, boomers that work 30, 40 uh, plus years, and now they have, you know, three, four, five, eight hundred thousand, a million dollars or more in their retirement plans. And even though they have required minimum distributions, the first distribution at 70 and a half was three point uh, six, five percent. So you could see you're probably never going to be forced to take out, you know, every dime in your life, right? So you're going to have something to pass on. That's what I see today is uh, the larger uh, retirement plans are those that um, are in their late 60s and then into their 70s. So they're going to be around a while, right? Using their money, um, enjoying themselves. But we're probably not going to see the impact of this 10-year requirement in a, in a large scale for another 10, 20 years. Now, that was all my opinion about that. But I do see that there is going to be you know, a case here and there, and it's going to be of our clients that somebody passes away young, you know, at 70, 75 years old, and the spouse passes away about the same time, and we have adult children that are going to inherit, and then in 10 years, they have to take this money out. If you have a $500,000 IRA, mom and dad pass, two children inherit, 250000 each, and then that has to be out in 10 years. That's a huge tax bill. Uh, let's say you take out twenty five to 30000 a year, right? Take out the principal and any earnings that you might have, and just spread it over that period of time. Twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars a year added on to that uh, working person's uh, income is probably going to put you in a higher tax bracket, and you know that's exactly why they passed the law this way and allowed a later minimum uh, distribution date of seventy-two to pay for that. And I put that in parentheses. That's how they talk about those things, right? How you pay for something? Well, through all the tax dollars that are probably going to come in from people being forced to take these IRAs, it's going to cover those delayed minimum distributions. My understanding is the uh, table that's being used right now, and you can look it up, do, do a quick search on the internet and just put in a IRS <clears throat> life expectancy tables, and it'll come up and show you, you know, how much you would need to take out each year from a retirement plan. They're going to stay the same in uh it's possible, though, that there is an adjustment, and uh, the conversation that was had with my company said it's possible, too, that uh, they're also researching that it might not take an act of Congress to make those changes. It could be just the uh, executive branch that makes those changes. Uh, so we'll see how that works out uh, through the IRS and through uh, 
the executive branch of the government. Well, um, it's a very complex but a very important uh, issue. People that want to get some information, what's the number they should call? Give me a call. I love talking about this stuff. 265-3540. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, John. That's Money Talk with Aaron Ricketts, presented by Ricketts, Ricketts & Associates, 3245 North Adrian Highway, Suite L. The opinions voiced on Money Talk are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Securities are offered through LPL Financial Member FINRA SIPC. Join us once again next week for Money Talk here on 103.9 WLAN.